I'm Odin, and welcome to DIY Prop Shop, where we recreate props using everyday... Oh, Pikachu. <laughs> Today I'm building the Egg Incubator from Pokemon Go. The Pokemon Egg Incubator is a device used to hatch eggs that players collect when they visit different Pokestops. The eggs are a way to get rare Pokemon, or Pokemon that are not available normally in your area. In the first Game Boy game, the player would ride a bike to quickly hatch eggs. And in the TV series, they had something that looked like an incubator, but the Egg Incubator is unique for the Pokemon Go game. There are two different egg incubators, a blue one that breaks after three eggs have hatched, and an orange one that can hatch an unlimited number of eggs. I'm going to make an orange incubator, so I don't have to break mine anytime soon. And to make the egg incubator, I'm going to start with a one gallon clear plastic jar. What I'm going to do with this is actually cut the bottom off and cut the top off and just keep the middle, and I'm going to make new ends to look correct. The middle portion of the jar is completely smooth. It's got a bit of a bulge at the top and the bottom. This works out for the graphics within the game, that the width is correct for the height between the two bumps. So I'm gonna cut it a little bit lower and a little bit higher than these bumps so I have something to push into the foam top and bottom that I'm going to make. There we are. To make the ends on the incubator, I'm gonna carve it out of this pink insulation foam. My first thought was to make smaller pieces that are easier to work with. So the foam was only one inch thick. The top of the bottom of the incubator is actually two inches thick. I'll need to glue two pieces together and then cut out the shape that I want. I'd like to use contact cement to glue the two halves of the foam together, but I'm concerned that the cement will actually dissolve the foam, so I'm gonna try it in a small piece first. Since the contact cement is dissolving the styrofoam, I'm gonna have to use five minute epoxy. And so the epoxies don't melt the foam. As the name implies, it only takes about five minutes for the epoxy to set up. So only mix up the amount you could use within that time. Now that the epoxy has had a chance to set up, I'm gonna cut out the basic shape I need for the top and the bottom, which are identical. So I'm gonna cut out my paper pattern, trace it onto the pink foam, and then carve out my shape. The side that I drew on represents the widest point of the top and the bottom of the egg incubator. The cylinder was set on top like this, and the bottom is actually gonna be rounded to this inner line on my paper pattern. So I'm gonna cut the center circle out, then I'm going to line it up on the back side, draw my line, then round all the edges off with a wood rasp, and finish with a foam sanding block. And here's the basic shape for my top and bottom. Once assembled, it's gonna pretty much look like this. A few other parts you need to do, there's a couple of plates that go in the front, there's a button on the side on the bottom, and on the top, there's gonna to be a vent. What I wanna do next is figure out exactly where the cylinder is gonna fit on my end caps. So what I wanna do is trace exactly where this is sitting, and then I'll come back to the rotary tool and cut out a space for the plastic to sit down into. Now I need to cut the panels to go in the front. I'm gonna make those out of self-adhesive foam. I'm gonna use this piece for the bottom. And there's a small square button that goes right back here. I'm going to cut that out of a piece of thick foam. That's all the detail I'm worried about for the bottom. On the top, I'm going to put a vent here. There's going to be a fake button. And on the bottom, I'm going to add a light. For the vent, I actually looked around trying to find exactly the right thing. I wasn't able to find it. So for a dollar, I thought this one would do just fine. So this piece sets a little behind the center line, probably right about there. To mark where I want the vent to go, I'm just gonna twist it back and forth, which will scratch the foam. My plan is to use a rotary tool to carve out a hole that I can then just drop this into. For the light that I'm gonna put on the underside, I bought a package of LED lights. So I didn't do the full depth of the light because if you actually look at the model in the game, it doesn't sit all the way flush. 
Lastly, there's what I assume is a little button that goes in the top. To make that, I'm gonna add a washer and a shirt button on top of it. I probably should make sure I got clearance of that. That's fine. Something like that. What I wanna do, because the pink foam was so easy to mark, is I'm gonna paint it a few times with just Elmer's glue. Elmer's glue will help protect them. It'll give them a hard coat, which will keep them from getting nicks and dings. So I've applied four coats of white glue to both the top and the bottom pieces. I'm gonna glue the button that goes in the top and then take them all outside and spray paint them. An egg incubator needs eggs. So I got a pair of styrofoam eggs from the hobby store. It was $3. Now there's a pretty pronounced seam line right through the middle of the egg here. I'm gonna sand that off first and then paint it. Now I've got the egg prepped for painting. What I wanna do is drill a small hole in the bottom so I can use an acrylic rod to actually float the egg above the bottom of the egg incubator, just like it is in the game. Now that the paint's dry, I want to take care of the vent in the top. The hole in the bottom is really rough from the roto tool. Instead of just painting it black, I'm going to take a piece of scrap black foam from a previous project and just glue that in place. So this side's pretty much done. In order to make this side look good, I printed out the graphics from the game onto label stock. I'm going to cut those out, stick them on, and then I can glue the light into the top. Here are the labels that go on the front as well. The orange is for the unlimited. Uh, it's a little off, I'm afraid. Oh, that's where it's gonna go. So the top and bottom pieces are just about done. The last part I need to make are the gaskets that hold the clear cylinder in place. I'm gonna cut some orange rings out of this craft foam to do that. The gaskets I need are thicker than the craft foam that I've got, so I'm gonna need to cut out a series of rings. I will then stack these in the shape that I need in order to make them as thick as I want and to have the profile that I want. So I cut out all the rings beforehand and then glued them together. That was a mistake. All the edges didn't line up and then it made it too tight to fit on the cylinder. A smarter idea would have been to have glued them together first and then cut them out. So what I ended up doing was taking the rotary tool, I went back through and ground it out, sanded down the foam, and made it so it's a good fit. The only thing I have left that I need to do is to actually put the egg into the base, and then I can do the final assembly. All right, let's hot glue this together. the lid, I curved the inside of the gasket so it'll fit the cylinder easier. And here is my Pokemon Go egg incubator. Total cost to build this project was about $18, but nearly half of that was shipping for the plastic jar. Let us know in the comments what other projects we should do. And if you make any of these builds, or if you're inspired to do something on your own, please send us a picture at DIYPropShop at break.com. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome builds.